How's it going guys? Jervis here with some Neo lore. Now I'm only going to cover uh, characters that we've seen appear in Samurai Warriors, at least the ones that are remembered up here in the story, and we're going to cover their stuff. Um, keep in mind I only have the lore up until the ending of the actual game. I do not have the lore for the DLC. Uh, if you guys want to, if you're interested in seeing that lore, let me know. Maybe I can get back to this game and get that lore for us in the future. But uh... There's a lot to see and there's a lot to learn and there's a lot of different takes on things and I think it's all interesting and that's why I want to share it with you. And in case you guys have not played Neo before, maybe this will encourage you to pick up the game so you can unlock the lore for yourself. It's it's a really great game. But uh, keep in mind there's not going to be any gameplay here. We're just going to talk about lore, take a look at the character models. Here's Hanzo Atori. And I can show you who his father is. They actually portray some of the family members in this game as bosses in the game as well. Um, I'll just show you the ones that I know of. Maybe there's others that I have defeated, but I just didn't catch on to who they really were. But anyway, first off, Hanzo Hattori. Pretty cool character model. I think I prefer the one in Samurai Warriors, but he fits perfectly in this game because everyone looks real here. <laughs> but, uh... Hanzo Atori is a ninja in the service of Ieyasu Tokugawa. His real name is Masanari. I never knew that. Ara, is that true, guys? Let me know. Hanzo is a name inherited by each successive head of the ninja clan in Iga Province, present-day Western Mie Prefecture. Although his father was known as Hanzo the Oni, I have heard that name before. Hanzo the Oni, the current Hanzo, has more of his father's skills as a ninja than his prowess as a military commander. He is a master of intelligence, concealment, and sabotage, and leads an army of several hundred ninja who lurk in the shadows waiting to carry out secret orders from their lord. As one of the few people in Japan with knowledge of foreign languages, uh, Hanzo guides the newly arrived William. This is just for the, the game story now in his search for Kelly. Uh, Hanzo sees ninja potential in William. William is going to appear in Muso Stars or Warriors All Stars. So this is kind of cool to know a little backstory about William too. I have William in here in the guide and the directory. We could check him out. Maybe I'll check him out last if you guys are interested. But he teaches William the basics of ninjutsu. And his years as a pirate left him highly developed survival skills. And his willingness to use any means to accomplish his ends uh, is another ninja-like trait. Hanzo keeps a cat inside his garments and uses it instead of a clock, checking the time of close by closely examining the dilation of the cat's pupils. In fact, the cat is possessed by Nekomata, another name I have heard in Japanese lore. An exceptionally long-lived guardian spirit, but as Hanzo cannot see spirits, he does not realize this. The current Hattori Hanzo is the third to serve the Tokugawa clan, Hanzo's father, his father was accomplished not only as a ninja, but also as a general known as Hanzo the Oni for his ferocity. Oni or not, however, he recognized that while the Tokugawa clan had many fearless generals on its side, it was lacking in operatives who could support it from the shadows. As a result, he began training his son stringently in the ways of ninjutsu from a young age so that he could grow up to meet this need. And that's kind of how Hanzo Hattori came up. His father was like, hey, we need this. And toughened him up, right? So, um, maybe that is in the Samurai Warrior lore, but I don't remember hearing that. Not in the story told. Maybe it's in the encyclopedia. But uh, this, this game, the way they portrayed the story, it was so interesting that I was like, I need to see the encyclopedia. I want to know more stuff. And that's how I started reading all this stuff, and I learned a bunch of things as well. Hopefully you guys will learn something too. But, uh, for this game, there's a thing called Amrita, which turns people into monsters. And, you know, they kind of ran it that Hanzo was ordered by Ieyasu to conceal the existence of Amrita. To accomplish this entirely, William had to be eliminated. And that was kind of like the ending of the game. Ieyasu ordered Hanzo to kill him, and... After defeating Kelly and rescuing uh, Sorsha, William let his guard down and turned his back to Hanzo as he left. But rather than seizing the opportunity to kill William, Hanzo watched him leave as a friend. For one such as Hanzo, who had never let sentiment interfere with his duties before, this was a token of gratitude and farewell to the samurai from a foreign land who had fought for Hanzo's country. So, 
is this true? I mean, obviously Amrita is not a real thing that happened. But did Hanzo truly run into William in real life? I don't know. I Wikipedia pages are unreliable, in my opinion, especially since you can't use them on a source when you do school papers or something. Because they can be edited by just about anybody, I believe, right? But uh, anyway, you guys have some more info to add here. Add it in the comment section because I'm definitely interested to learn more about this. Uh, next character, Okatsu. Alright, so this is a female ninja. This character was actually made up for this game. I remember one of you guys in the comment section telling me she was a concubine for uh, Ieyasu, which is interesting. But in this game, she's portrayed as Ieyasu's daughter. So Okatsu is a female ninja or Kunoichi under, under Hanzo Hattori. Trained in the same Iga Ninjutsu as Hanzo, she accompanies William on his travels. Kunoichi are as skilled as warriors and spies as male ninja, but are also able to masquerade as powerless women to encourage targets to let their guard down or disguise themselves as maids to gather information. Okatsu's mastery of every aspect of the ninja way is said to rival even her teacher, Hanzo, and makes her a strongly trusted figure. Uh, Okatsu's father is Ieyasu Tokugawa. Her elder brother Nobuyasu was killed at an early age, allegedly to ensure the safety of Ieyasu himself. She was born. She has borne a grudge against Ieyasu ever since, and left his household as soon as she could to study under Hanzo Hattori. She despises not only Ieyasu but all samurai, and indeed the entire bloody warlike world she is forced to live in. Okatsu spent years under Hanzo gathering rumors about yokai and information about strange phenomena likely to be Amrita related from around the country. She's highly experienced and a master of disguise, able to infiltrate any location. Okatsu is skilled in the art of the Kodachi dagger and the shuriken throwing blade, but considers these a last resort as she is reluctant to harm people even for the sake of the mission. At first, Okatsu was suspicious of William, a foreigner who claims to be able to see spirits, but she eventually warmed up to him. In William, she feels great ninja potential, but sees him make more effective use of his skills than she ever could. At the same time, her competitive side will not let her defer to him so easily, and when she crosses blade with William, she does so in deadly earnest. Over the course of their battles, Okatsu became interested, even fond of William's way of thinking and approach to life, so different from the Japanese samurai she knew. However, she never revealed this interest to William, and he left Japan without saying a word to her. For her part, she made no attempt to follow him or persuade him to stay. Kuroda Nagamasa. Now, this is a character that was not playable in Samurai Warriors, but they actually put some emphasis on him here. He looks pretty cool. And you actually can get this armor set if uh, throughout the game enemies will just drop them. Random enemies will drop them, people that have them on will drop them. Oh yeah, we never did a spin around on Okatsu, did we? So let's do a quick spin there. Alright, so Kuroda Nagamasa, sometimes known as Kichibei, was a general under the Toyotomi clan, the son of Kuroda Kanbei. Nagamasa was entrusted to Hideyoshi as a child hostage when Kanbei was captured by enemy forces. However, Oda Nobunaga suspected him of treachery and ordered Nagamasa killed. It was only quick thinking on the part of Takenaka Hanbei that saved him. After coming of age, Nagamasa made his name fighting alongside his father for Hideyoshi at Shizu Gatake and during the conquest of Kyushu. As a leader of the front lines, his opinions often clash with those of Ishida Mitsunari, who provided support from the rear, since he also believes that his father's removal from the center of power was due to slander by Mitsunari, he bears a grudge against him. Nagamasa is a good person who wears his heart on his sleeve and gets along well with new people. He does have some of his father's political genius, being involved in the plotting of the Mori clan. But he prefers to face his enemies face to face like a warrior. He is driven by a constant, urgent desire to live up to the expectations of his father and earn his approval through great deeds. 
At the Battle of Sekigahara, Nagamasa wore an unusual I uh, Ichi no Tane helmet instead of his usual horn design. So here's his horn design here. Um, Ichi no Tane refers to the battlefield of yore where Minamoto no Yoshitsune surprise attack defeated the Heike. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Nagamasa's helmet evoked it with a striking design and a prayer for victory. It was said to have been designed by Takanaka Hanbei, the man who saved Nagamasa's life, and Nagamasa apparently wore it to symbolize his vow to Takanaka that he would be victorious. Nagamasa and Mitsunari were at odds for a long time, but when Mitsunari lost and was captured after the Battle of Sekigahara, Nagamasa had no words of abuse or contempt for him. When Mitsunari was sentenced to death, Nagamasa is said to have recognized the man's depth of feeling and acceptance of his fate, playing, placing his own coat on Mitsunari's shoulders as a gesture from one warrior to another. Nagamasa himself was granted a vast fiefdom of Tokugawa uh, by Tokugawa Ieyasu for his unparalleled service at the Battle of Sekigahara. He had finally lived up to his father's expectations. So this, the son of K Kanbei Kuroda, which you, I never really heard about him in Samurai Warriors, but uh, I'm kind of glad Neo put some emphasis on him because I think he's a pretty cool character. And reading up the information here, it all sounds good. It sounds like he was a pretty important character, definitely for the Toyotomi clan. But uh, now we move on to Kanbei Kuroda. Let's do a little spin around. He does not fight in this game, but he's a smart guy. That's what he does. So he's a general under the, under the Toyotomi clan. His real name is Kiyoaki. And towards the end of his life, he adopted the name Yoshitaka. He is the father of Kuroda Nagamasa and served Hideyoshi as a staff officer providing battlefield assistance. After the Honoji incident, when Hideyoshi found himself in a tight spot, Kanbei successfully led a massive retreat known as the Shugoku Rollback. This and other accomplishments earned him a reputation as an unparalleled military strategist. Hideyoshi, however, was wary of Kanbei's brilliance and gradually forced him away from the center of power and all the way to Kyushu. Kanbei was captured and imprisoned by enemy forces uh, in his youth and the damage done to his body had never fully healed. He walks with a stick and is physically in decline, but his ambition to be ruler of the whole nation remains as unclouded as ever, and he is watching current events with keen interest. Kanbei is sensitive to social, political change, and knowledgeable about other countries. He showed no timidity in dealing with William in an age where foreigners were a rare sight in Japan, he even recommend that William adopt the name Anjin Pilot, and I have heard this before. They definitely have used the word Anjin. It's it's everywhere, dude. I've seen it in history books, seen it online. It's all over the place. Anjin was definitely uh, a thing, since his real name would be so difficult for Japanese to pronounce. Kanbei continues to watch William closely, sensing in him the possibility of changing the course of Jap uh, Japanese history. Kanbei thrived under the Oda and Toyotomi clans in an age of violent upheaval. Seeing that the flames of war were set to rage again, he kept a close eye on Ishida and Tokugawa. He remains hopeful of conquering Japan himself and is prepared to spread, uh, spring into action if the right opportunity appears. However, he cannot hide his deteriorating health and much of his hopes now rest with his son Nagamasa. Kanbei never speaks of his love for his son but he is proud of how Nagamasa is turning out and has come to feel that his own true role is to watch over him. That's pretty cool, man. They should like include something like this. Um, I'd have expected a little something like this from Samurai Warriors 4 too, where they started pinpointing specific officers. But uh, maybe in the future we'll get to see more about his son. I, this is pretty interesting to me. Uh, Tachi Bana Ginshio, definitely my favorite model of her. I think she looks great in this game. 
And she definitely still has her Thunder Sword in this game. And uh, in this game, it's referred to as that Aikiri. I believe it's the same thing in Samurai Warriors as well, but it has a Thunder element on it. So Tachibana Kinshio is the wife of Tachibana Muneshige. Muneshige, who has had known from uh, who she had known from childhood, is the adopted son of Tachibana Dosetsu. Said to have been so fierce, he killed a god of lightning with a sword when a thunderbolt fell near him. Ginsho inherited not only her father's legendary sword, Raikiri, also known as the Lightning Slicer, but also his ferocity as a warrior. She shows no fear whatsoever before the likes of Yokai. The bond between Ginsho and her husband is, is loyal and firm, and their combined military prowess is feared even by the blood soaked warriors of Kyushu. Ginshio fell ill while Munashige was on a campaign and lost the ability to bear children. I never knew that. Um, she senses too that the end of her life cannot be far away. Her chief wish, uh, wish now is to combine forces with Munashige to protect the people. She loves Munashige but her regret over her childlessness can lead her to be somewhat distant with him. She is jealous of Yachiko, Munashige's concubine. But ultimately accept her as another woman supporting Munashige in the Tachibana clan. Ginchu's guardian spirit is a female Raiken, the maid of her husband Munashige's Raiken guardian spirit. Munashige and Ginchio are as inseparable as her guardian companions and care for each other deeply. When Munashige is away, Ginchio is entrusted with the castle. It was later said that when trouble arose, she and her maids would don their armor to meet the enemy, a sign of how firmly Munashige trusted her. Ginchio was, uh, Ginchio was also so beloved by the people in their domain that enemies would avoid passing her residence too closely for fear of incurring the wrath of local peasantry. Crazy, right? Uh, next, we take a look at Munashige. He looks pretty cool here. Munashige is a general under the Toyotomi clan, a superb leader of men. He is trusted not only by his advisors, but also by the residents of his domain. He was born to the Takahashi, a family loyal to the Otomo clan, but was adopted into the Tachibana clan when he married Ginshio daughter of Tachibana Dosetsu, the clan's leader at the time. He has since become head of the clan himself. Dosetsu was known for his valor, said to even have the backing of the gods of lightning, but Munashige is easily Dosetsu's equal in this regard. He was forced into a difficult stand by the North Ward advance of the Shimazu clan, but when Hideyoshi arrived to take the entire island of Kyushu, he was able to turn back the tide. Later, his reputation as the most honorable and bravest warrior in the West saw him recruited as a direct advisor to Hideyoshi. Munishige's guardian spirit is a male Raiken, the mate of wife Ginchou's guardian spirit. They're inseparable. It looks like it's saying the same thing. Uh, while he was away in a campaign, she fell ill and lost the ability to bear children. Munishige realized this but said nothing about it. However, there is a new distance between them and their relationship has become somewhat awkward. That's kind of sad. Uh, he is a master of the Taisha School of Swordsmanship and also skilled in several schools of archery. A true renaissance man, he partakes of many arts including the tea ceremony, calligraphy, incense, linked poetry, the no theater, and the flute. He was even said to sculpt images of the Buddha and craft his own bows. Both Hideyoshi and Ieyasu thought highly of him as a man, and he was praised as a warrior among warriors. Like, the way they're showing off Munashige here is like, he was way much more, way more important than what Samurai Warriors is portraying him. And I feel like Samurai Warriors may get into this later, though I'm not sure. But I hope they would. So it can link up with this, because I like combining the lures together. I think it's really cool. But uh, at the battle of Sekigahara, Munishige was invited to join the Tokugawa side. His strong sense of loyalty would not permit it. However, 
and he fought alongside Ishida. Munishige laid siege to Otsu Castle in Omi Province, now Shiga Prefecture. But the Ishida side's loss at the main battle forced him to retreat entirely. At that time, he met Shimazu Yoshihiro, the killer of his father, at a port in Osaka. When his advisors urged him to exact a re uh, vengeance, however, he replied slaughtering a defeated enemy is not honorable for a warrior. Instead of attacking, he offered his services a as a protector, accompanying Yoshihiro back to Kyushu and forming new bonds of friendship. That is a really interesting... If you guys can confirm this, that is kind of crazy, man. Um, here's another character that I'd never seen in the game, but I saw the name Kobayakawa, and I was like, holy crap, is this, is she in relation to, uh, to a certain someone we know in Samurai Warriors 4? And I think that is the case. So, Hideaki is a general under the Toyotomi clan. He's a leader of the Shugoku-based Kobayakawa clan, which along with the Kikawa clan is one of the two rivers, Kawa. Supporting the Mori clan, Hideaki was born into Hideyoshi's family and wasn't even considered for a role as a successor before the birth of Hideyori had made that irrelevant. Instead, he was adopted by Kobayakawa Takakage, which we know who this is, Takakage, and inherited his position. Rising so high early in life made him arrogant, and the other generals considered him an inexperienced child. Hideaki provided his valor in his first campaign after coming of age, catching the eye of veterans like Kato Kiyomasa. However, despite committing no particular wrong, he was treated poorly, including having half of his land taken away. This bred anger and resentment, and his natural fondness for drink and luxury took a turn for the worse. Hideaki acts arrogantly towards others, but the truth is that he fears what the, that they will see through his act and look down on him. As a result, he lacks confidence in his actions. On the other hand, in, in his relationships with superiors, he has a tendency to rely on their conscience and goodwill, nor can he bring himself to abandon all humanity. He seeks more power, but finds a uh, quiescence to power meaningless. He tends to view the world coldly as something without any worth, and his desire to tear it up and oppose everything grows stronger by the day. Even the smallest event might set him off. Although Hideaki began the Battle of Sekigahara on the Osaka side, he secretly made contact with the Tokugawa camp and switched allegiances. The size of Hideaki's force meant that his betrayal sparked a series of similar reversals in the Osaka camp with multiple generals that had stood firm up until then joining the Tokugawa instead. This in turn decided the shape of the battle as a whole. Afterwards, Hideaki was rewarded with significant increasings in land holdings, but he died suddenly, just two years later. Speculations was rife that he had been cursed by Otane Yoshitsugu, who resented Hideaki for his betrayal interesting stuff there this is the man with the steel balls i was telling you about so tori mototara also known as hikoemon was a general under the tokugawa clan an older leader who has known ieyasu since the latter was a boy his loyalty to his lord and earnest undeceitful service was praised as the epitome of the mikawa samurai ideal his role in Tokugawa's army was to ride at the head of a unit accompanying Ieyasu himself. Or is that is that a typo? Isu? Ieyasu. I'm going to say Ieyasu himself. Motutada distinguished himself in both defensive and offensive actions against the Takara clan and their allies. When Ieyasu was later attacked from the rear by the Hojo, the Hojo clan, Motutada fought them off. He refused any reward, however, saying that such praise was only useful to those changing their loyalties. When Toyotomi Hideyoshi became Ieyasu's lord and offered similar 
official recognition, Mototara rejected it again, revealing a side so loyal and stubborn as to be impractical. Now this is where it gets crazy, where this guy's loyalty is boom, you know this guy, you need friends like this. Well maybe, maybe not, because then you'll run out of them eventually, but when Ieyasu left the battle, Uesugi Kakekatsu, Mototaro was left behind with a handful of men to guard Fushimi Castle. This is stuff I never knew about playing Samurai Warriors, and I'm glad Neo put some light on it. But this guy, I think this guy needs to be a playable character. Just because of this, I got a lot of respect for him. But Ieyasu knew that if Fushimi Castle was only lightly defended, Ishida's forces would attack. Mototara expected this too and accepted the assignment, prepared to sacrifice himself for Ieyasu's strategic gain. You know how insane that is? You go, you accept a mission knowing you're going to die just to give your lord, you're so loyal to him, you want him to win no matter what. You're going to literally die to help his plan, to ensure that he is victorious. Is this how he looked in real life? I have no idea, but respect to this guy. Um, before long, Fushimi Castle was indeed surrounded by Ishida's troops. The difference in strength was obvious, but Mototara Moto refused all invitations to surrender. Defending the castle for 12 days, he had a handful of soldiers defending the castle for 12 days. This defensive sacrifice sent Ishida's strategic plans into disarray. And I remember going online, reading up on this, and... If I remember correctly, Ishida brought like 40,000 troops to this battle to invade this castle. And Mototara, he, he was holding off the castle with like a handful of troops, like 12 soldiers. And I don't know if that's including himself. I read it somewhere. Is it true? I'm not sure. But it's uh, it's insane that this, right, this dude, he, him and his soldiers, they should all, you know, get a little spot in history, a little thumbs up there. Because this guy, balls of steel, man. Much respect for Mototara Tori here. Uh, here is uh, how now Masa Ii is portrayed in this game. Pretty cool. Ii now Masa was a general under Ieyasu. Known for being as versed in the finer arts as the arts of war, he was counted among the four celestial kings. I've never heard of that whose contributions to the Tokugawa clan were most spectacular. Now, Masa entered Ieyasu's service as a page at the Battle of Nagashino, which triggered the demise of the Takara clan. Despite his gentle demeanor, youthful good looks, his body was covered in countless battle scars, revealing the intensity of his efforts on the battlefield. Now, Masa hired a unit of Takara retainers who were feared for their blood-red armor and reorganized them as EE's Reds. Now, Masa led them personally. The Reds proved their mettle at the battle across Japan, with now Masa himself wearing a horn helmet and bringing such ferocity <clears throat> uh, to every confrontation that he became known as the Red Oni. When Naomasa was two, his father was suspected of plotting against the Imagawa clan and executed. It was Ii Naotora who took in and raised Naomasa after that. Naotora was a crafty woman and a master negotiator who rescued the Ii clan from its precarious situation and earned the sincere trust of her retainers. After her death, Naomasa inherited her guardian spirit, the Fire Tiger. Now Masa is known for his good looks and considerate nature as well as his bravery in battle. When Hideyoshi Toyotomi's mother, Oman Dokoro, wow, that's Oman Dokoro was sent to the Tokugawa clan as a hostage before Ieyasu accepted a position under Hideyoshi, now Masa treated her with such courtesy that she was quite taken with him. It is said that when Oman Dokoro returned to the Toyotomi clan, she begged for him to be chosen as her bodyguard. Interesting. If that's true, that is pretty cool. A lot of the stuff I'm gonna... I'm just trying to mix it up with the Samurai Warriors lore to see if I can uh, get something out of it, but I still think it's really interesting to know all this stuff. If it's true, it's cool to know these little details that we never 
would have heard of in Samurai Warriors. Ah, uh, now, oh man, here's the bread and butter here. Ieyasu Tokugawa. Oh, he's betrayed in this game. He was daimyo of the eight provinces of the Edo region and leader of the five elders advising Toyotomi's government. In 1596, he was made inner minister and became referred to as Naifu. As a result, as a survivor of battle after battle, he became known as the greatest archer on the Eastern Way. I had never known that Ieyasu was an archer at all. If you play the Samurai Warrior games, you would never think he used he used bows ever. He's always had a different type of weapon. Um, but if this is true, that's kind of insane too because I, I would never have guessed, right? In other words, the most skillful general in Eastern Japan he was also a gifted and cunning schemer, which earned him his nickname, the Tanuki. At a young age, he served the Imagawa clan as a hostage. After this, he formed an alliance of Oda Nobunaga and struck out on his own. The ongoing threat posed by the Takata clan, however, meant that the pact with the Oda clan became more of a master-servant relationship, and he became familiar with the struggles of being a minor force. Although Ieyasu has been dogged with difficulties throughout his life, he's always managed to find a way to overcome them. After his service to Toyotomi Hideyoshi, today he's considered closer than anyone else to conquest and unification of all Japan, which I know is to be true. He came the closest. Um, now, oh man, it gets, it starts picking up, man. Like Ieyasu felt the effects of Japan's seemingly endless wars from an early age. His mother died and he himself became a hostage. Few realize just how determined he is to realize nationwide peace as a result. I never knew that he was a hostage. If I just go by Samurai Warriors lore, I would never know that he was a hostage himself as a child. Um, maybe that's just for this game, but I don't think it's just for this game. I think this is actually more history that Samurai Warriors never covered. But, um... He's fully prepared to sacrifice retainers and even his own wife and children for the sake of his, his this ideal. Nevertheless, he is greatly burdened by the knowledge of all the people he has sacrificed and enemies he has defeated so far, and has seen this burden on Ieyasu's back that convinces William that the daimy, uh, daimyo's beliefs are genuine. At Sekigahara, Ieyasu quickly realized that this would be the battle that decided who controlled Japan and began plotting against other daimyo so that he could come out the ultimate victor. Things looked bad for Ieyasu as the battle began. Morale was low among his troops and they were forced into inferior positions. But at the conclusion of the fighting, Ieyasu's victory was con uh, uncontested. This was partly because of William and Tenkai's efforts. We'll get into Tenkai a little bit later because I think it's interesting his role in this game. Uh, combined with Mitsunari's misuse of Amrita. But that aside of things would remain secret forever. Ieyasu's victory at the Battle of Sekigahara made him the ruler of all Japan. However, there was still much to be done. One task was complete. Uh, erasure of the existence of Amrita from the record. Those who fell at Sekigahara were another burden to Ieyasu. But he continued to press forward. Peace under heaven was uh, almost a reality so Ieyasu had a lot of rough stuff here dude like when he when he said he was prepared to sacrifice retainers his own his own wife and children they're not kidding we're gonna get into that soon uh hold on did I did I pass someone over here no I did not good Honda Tadakatsu he's actually portrayed as a chubby guy in this game is this how he looked in history I'm not sure but I've always heard he was a big guy Big, I don't know if they meant muscular or chubby, but in this game, he's kind of a chubby dude. So, he's a general under Tokugawa Ieyasu, commonly known as Haihachiro. He was, uh, that's also another name I've never heard of, Haihachiro. But he was regarded as one of the four celestial kings who had contributed the most to Tokugawa's campaign of conquest. Tadakatsu came from a long line of retainers to the Tokugawa clan, but his dazzling martial skills put him ahead of the pack. Even in the face of overwhelming odds, his fighting during, re during retreat stunned the enemy 
who singled him out among Ieyasu's men as worthy of respect. What's more, despite participating in countless battles over the course of his life, he was such a skilled tactician that he was said to have never been injured. And I've also heard that as well, that he he's just that good, he's never been injured in battle. His courageous use of small forces to draw out the enemy army and protect his allies was just one of the things that led to Toyotomi Hideyoshi himself declaring that Tarakatsu had no equal in Eastern Japan. Tarakatsu boasted great, greater strength than any of his rivals and always felt mild dissatisfaction when a battle came to an end. The more worthy rivals he's defeated, the greater his feeling became. At the same time, he became less excited on the battlefield itself. This was when Tarakatsu met William and the Englishman he sent something uh, in the Englishman he sent something of those worthy rivals of old lacking the strength to build yo uh, battle yokai himself Tarakatsu uh, relies on William but deep in his heart he's strongly interested in, in uh, William's battle Tarakatsu a fierce general is said to have been uh, have taken join the battle against Takada's forces known for their valor and daring Takara's army in turn rated Tarakatsu highly. The two considered each other honorable rivals. Indeed, after the Battle of Nagashino, Tarakatsu is said to have lamented the loss of the Takara clan's bravest warriors. Despite leading only minimal forces at the Battle of Sekigahara, Tarakatsu made a flying squadron of his men and defeated many enemies. When praised by an allied general after the battle, he is said to have replied, it is not that I was a good leader, the enemy was simply too weak. Those are supposedly the exact words he said in history. I looked it up online and I actually, there was some things to support it. I I really don't know, but I saw it, I, I've seen it in other places as well. Um, Tarakatsu continued to serve Ieyasu loyally after the battle, proving a skilled politician and wise ruler as well as a formidable warrior. Fuku, we're not gonna touch up on her. I don't think. I mean, she's married to one of Kobayakawa Hideaki's inner circle. I'll put it here. You guys can read it if you'd like to. She received the title of Lady Kasuga. But she does work uh, with Tenkai if you want to take a look at her. She's pretty cool. You can actually be this character if you want in the game. But uh, an Anmyo Mage. Tenkai. This guy's interesting, because at the moment that we got him, I was like, why is this guy helping us? Who is this guy? And the way that this game spun it in their lore is, well, Tenkai is in fact a catchy Mitsuhide. We're going to get to that in a second. It's there. It's on the second paragraph, but we're going to get there. So he is a monk at Morio Juji Kitain, Kitain Temple in Kawagoe. Usashi Province, present-day Saitama Prefecture. His early life is shrouded in mystery, but after taking orders, he studied at various temples before joining the Tendai sect of esoteric Buddhism. Hmm. As well as Buddhism, he is versed in Shinto, Taoism, Anmyo, and Shugendo, and even Feng Shui, and uses his knowledge to advise powerful daimyo. A daimyo. It seems that Anmyo magic has some overlap with alchemy, and Tenkai is concerned that abusing the spiritual power of Amrita could lead to disaster. Now, the second paragraph, this is where it's like, whoa, this I didn't know who this guy was. So, there's actually an option here to change appearance. This is how Akechi Mitsuhide is portrayed in this game. Not playable, but this is how he'd look in this game, in his age, I suppose. He is, in fact, Akechi Mitsuhide, the general who catalyzed the Honoji Temple incident which forced Oda Nobunaga to take his own life. Mitsuhide was said to have been murdered by rogues after being defeated in battle by Toyotomi Hideyoshi. But in fact, he simply changed his name to Tenkai and started a new life as a monk. Today he is strongly in sympathy with Tokugawa Ieyasu's desire to unite all under heaven and supports Ieyasu behind the scenes when possible. So how they spun it in this game, <laughs> Nobunaga planned to use the power of Amrita to conquer not only all of Japan, 
but the entire world. There was no way to stop him, no way to protect the harmony of the world. Mitsuhide chose the path of murdering his own lord knowing full well the stain it would leave on his honor. Afterwards, he changed his name and went into hiding, watching for a long time to see if another challenger would arrive to threaten the balance of world harmony. When Kelly and William arrived in Japan, Mitsuhide, now Tenkai, felt the signs again to prevent matters advancing too far. He sent Fuku to Dazaifu to stop them. So after the battle of Sekigahara, Tenkai uses ma his powers as an Anmyo mage and a feng shui master to help plan the street layout of Edo. Just as the Mount Hiei Temple Complex stands before the northeastern Oni Gate of Kyoto, as a spiritual barrier, discouraging Oni and other monsters from entering the capital. Tenkai built Kaneiji Temple, I know that's wrong, I said that wrong, on Mount Toei in Tokyo's northern eastern to provide permanent protection for Edo. So I think it's pretty interesting that they still included Mitsuhide in the game, just a little differently. There's a lot of characters here that come off differently. We're going to see Matsunaga here. There's a, there's a lot. And my hands down favorite version of Saika Magoichi, this is my favorite in any game. Sengoku Basra, Samurai Warriors, this is hands down the coolest one I've ever seen. And he is a tough boss fight too. I still have not got the perfect uh, kill on him where he doesn't do single damage to me. I always get caught by a grenade or something. or It sucks man, I haven't haven't beat this guy yet, but he uh, he's so cool. I love this his character model. But uh, Saika Magoichi in the head of the is the head of the uh, Saika, based in Western Ki Province or Ki Province, present-day Wakayama Prefecture. The name Saika Magoichi is adopted by each successive leader of the Saika clan, so that is technically not even his real name. You're just adopting the name when you're the head of the clan. Which makes sense. There was a lot of people questioning, why is her name Saika Magoichi? He's always a guy, blah, 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 and Sengoku Basra. And this actually makes more sense. Kind of like how the Hanzo name is adopted when you're the head of the Hanzo clan, etc., etc. So, the current Magoichi is a man whose real name is Suzuki Shigetomo. I never knew this about Magoichi Saika. Never. Uh, maybe it's in the Samurai Warriors... Um, encyclopedia but I've never really gone in there to check but uh, they should put some some light on that the same way they put light on Hideyoshi Hashiba his old name and then he turns into Toyotomi anyway uh, back onto this the Saika are a band of traveling mercenaries skilled in firearms cannons and other guns they prefer to fight small guerrilla operations than large-scale battles but they will fight for whoever pays them and have no allegiance to any lord in the employ of Ken Nio of Honganji Temple, they accompanied Ishiyama Honganji, Honganji in Osaka and put up fierce resistance against Oda Nobunaga, but they were later defeated during Hideyoshi's Kyushu campaign. They revere the sacred crow, Yata Garasu, and are said to be able to see spirits and other invisible presences. Among the Saika led by Magoichi were many who were also involved in shipping and trade. For this reason, news from even fair-flung places reaches a group quickly. This, for example, is how they came to master firearms so soon after they began to be imported through Tanegashima. They then began training great marksmen and rehearsing tactics for battle with firearms until they had become a powerful military group. It was commonly believed that those with the Psyche on their side would always win, and those facing the Psyche would always lose. Magoichi fought fiercely against Nobunaga and are said even to have landed a hit on the man from a firearm. I never knew that they, they said they landed a shot. Is it true? I don't know. But that is kind of interesting to know. If he was, if they did hit him at some point... I think Samurai Warriors 4 or 2 may have shown that, or Samurai Warriors 4, where they shot at him, but I believe they missed in, uh, in the clip. I'm trying to remember right now, it does sound familiar a little bit. Uh, forcing him to flee, the Saika arranged their marksmen in two lines, while the front line fires, the second reloads. 
The two then exchange places and the cycle repeats. In this way, the Psyka found a way to overcome the main weak point of firearms, the need to reload. In his later years, Nobunaga used the three-layered technique against the Takara forces, perhaps because he remembered how much trouble the tactic had previously caused him. So Nobunaga learned from his mistakes and he's already really smart as it is and you just gave him another weapon here. By, and you didn't kill him, so he learned from it. Uh, the Saika, a small gathering of nobles and craftsmen, are one of the few groups that have slipped out from under the daimyo system and successfully taken control of their own fate. When Hideyoshi Toyotomi came to prominence, they fought against the centralization of power, political power he represented. They did not prevail against his vast armies, however, and were finally brought under his authority. Nevertheless, they remained a rebellious anti-authoritarian group, always polishing their martial skills to ensure that they can protect and maintain their way of life in the face of massive political and social change. So, Magoichi Saika, Suzuki, Shige Tomo, I should say. I gotta check the Samurai Warrior Encyclopedia, see if they mention that in there. So, Otani Yoshitsugu, how he's portrayed in this game. But when you fight him in the game, you won't fight his human form, you will fight this form. But uh, we're gonna keep it on his human form for here. So, Otani Yoshitsugu is a general under the Toyotomi clan. Known for his combination of intelligence and bravery, Yoshitsugu has a claim, cool-headed demeanor that conceals a fiery fighting spirit within. Yoshitsugu entered Hideyoshi's service at a young age and was rewarded for his contribution to the Hideyoshi's campaign to unify Japan with the title Gyobu Shoyu, a lesser minister of justice. He eventually became known as a Gyobu which I guess is just a minister of justice, right? Despite his illness, he fought valiantly at Shizugatake in Orawara. During the conquest of Kyushu, he seized a weapon, waded into the Negoro holdup in their temple, and brought back the head of their leader. Yoshitsugu was often in the company of Ishida Mitsunari during his administrative duties, and the two of them became firm friends. Able to speak frankly with each other, he said they had been skilled in not only martial, but also mystical arts. Yoshitsugu's friendship with Mitsunari began when the two of them were young warriors fighting in the battle of Shizugatake. Not only did Yoshitsugu convince enemy armies to secretly switch sides and turn on their allies in advance, he also rode with Mitsunari and the rest of the vanguard and was hailed afterwards as one of the three swords of the battle. After Hideyoshi's death, when Mitsunari grew more determined than his resistance to Ieyasu, Yoshitsugu tried to convince him there was no way to win, but was impressed enough by Mitsunari's passion to stand alongside him in what Yoshitsugu knew would be a losing battle. At the Battle of Sekigahara, he was pierced in the side by the spear tip of the traitor Hideyaki Kobayakawa taking him out of the battle and throwing his forces into disarray. As his subordinates began to die one after another, he transformed into an oni and held back the, the enemy until he finally faced William. So he had been actually betrayed by Hideaki and that's what forced him to transform here for this game. Anyway, uh, he faced William and he was defeated. So. Um, this is something I did not know. Down here, Yoshitsugu's daughter, Chikurin In, married Sanada Yukimura. Hold on, guys. What is this? This isn't... This isn't uh, Kunoichi that liked him. Is that her real name? I don't know. But let's keep on reading. It was a political marriage suggested by Hideyoshi, but it served to bind the Otane and Sanada clans together tightly. Yoshitsugu said to have recognized the genius in the still young Yukimura and expected great things from him. Yukimura too was proud to have an intelligent and powerful father-in-law that he could respect. What's interesting is this whole paragraph here has nothing to do with the game. I have not met Yukimura in the game, 
we have not met his wife. That's why I feel like this may be actual facts right here. Can you guys help support this or or uh, maybe it's not complete? You guys let me know in the comment section what actually is going on here. Is that Kunoichi's real name? I don't know. I, I have no idea. Honestly, I don't know who that is. Chikorin In. But uh, on to the next. Oh man, Shimasako. I prefer this version than his Samurai Warrior version as well. I just think he looks like a total badass. But uh, his real name is Shima Kiyuki. He was a general in the service of Ishida Mitsunari, responsible for military strategy. He proved a wise counselor to Mitsunari, able to temper his lord's idealism with more realistic advice. Born to the powerful fam family in Yamato province, uh, province present day Nara Prefecture, he served the Tsutsui clan. Tsutsui, yeah, I think that's it. Tsutsui clan in its struggle against Matsunaga Hisahide and his allies until he was cast out and, and became a ronin after remonstrating too frankly with his lord. Mitsunari, then a leader in the Toyotomi clan's service, recognized Sakon's genius. He managed to recruit Sakon in exchange for half of his domain in Sawayama. And people used to say that Mitsunari had two things that he didn't deserve. Sawayama Castle and, Sa and Shima Sakon. This is definitely something Samurai Warriors has touched up on. Um, they, they always say he doesn't deserve either of them. So next on, uh, his bravery was widely known and he had turned on many offers of employment from other daimyo, uh, daimyo before Mitsunari. He finally accepted Mitsunari's because he was so deeply moved by the startling and unprecedented offer of half of Mitsunari's own land in exchange for Sakon's service. Hideyoshi was also shocked and delighted by Mitsunari's actions and personally reminded Sakon to serve Mitsunari faithfully. He's like, dude, he wanted you so bad, stay with him please. Just, He gave you half of his stuff. Uh, although Sakon was in Mitsunari's service, Mitsunari saw him as more of a much older brother. Sakon had a certain humanity and trustworthiness that Mitsunari lacked and Mitsunari placed great importance on his opinions. Sakon, for this part, sometimes said things to Mitsunari that could be taken as sarcastic or rude but never broke his vows of loyalty. Instead, he exerted himself to the utmost in support of his lord's success. At Sekigahara, Sakon's ferocity shocked and terrorized the Tokugawa troops who dubbed him Sakon the Oni. Kuroda Nagamasa's forces who met Sakon Sakon and his soldiers head on were said to have been so traumatized they suffered from nightmares uh, for nightmares long afterwards, leaping from their beds in the middle of the night in fear. Another curious story is that although many of those who faced Sakon later described his armor, none of their descriptions matched in any detail. It seems the sight was so disturbing that their memories simply failed them. That's insane. And in the game, they're just like, he's just a strategist. He travels around, he doesn't care, but they they make him seem like such a monster in this game, like he's so scary. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, although Sakon was said to have been brutally slain at the Battle of Sekigahara, his remains were never found. Persistent sightings of him in Kyoto after the battle led some to conclude that he had in fact escaped death at Sekigahara and returned to the capital. So that is pretty cool. Actually, after reading this, I had gained a new respect for this character and I thought he was really cool as well. But this one, I, I don't like, I don't know, I just don't, I'm not a fan of the one in Samurai Warriors after seeing this one. I just really like this one. I like the armor, I love spear users. He just, it was a plus plus all around. Now we're gonna look at Ishida Mitsunari. Now, um, when you fight him in a game, he's gonna look like this. But we're gonna stick to his regular form here. No colorful hair today. But uh, Mitsunari is a general under the Toyotomi clan. He has served Hideyoshi since the latter was under Oda Nobunaga and was rewarded with the administrative rank of Jibu Shoya. Don't know what that means. After Hideyoshi's conquest, 
He was referred to as a Jibusho as a result. Uh, Hideyoshi trusted Mitsunari as a man not driven by self-interest and granted him the fiefdom of Sawayama in Omi province. So he kind of could tell this guy is not here for greed, he's here to help. That's why I like this guy. So I'm going to give him this stuff, etc, etc. It's in present day Shiga prefecture. Mitsunari was one of the five commissioners who actually held power under Hideyoshi, but often argued obstinately with the others due to his own purity and sense of justice. Guys, just be know I'm going to be making a lot of mistakes here. Uh, one, I've been talking for a while. Two, I'm not familiar with the language and some of the words they're using, so I am going to make mistakes. I am human. Feel free to correct me in the comment section. So, uh, next on, after the death of Hideyoshi, he clashed furiously with the, fra with the faction who were for accepting Tokugawa Ieyasu and put everything he had into the survival of the Toyotomi clan. He was no less skilled a plotter than Ieyasu the Tanuki and was called by some the Fox of Sawayama, which when he transforms, he kind of is a fox. He's got the fox tail and, you know, it's pretty interesting design. I think it was a cool design. Um, after his side lost the Battle of Sekigahara, Mitsunari was betrayed by Kelly. He briefly became an Oni, but purification with the sacred water of Ibu Kiyama restored him to sanity. Although used by Kelly to further the latter's inhuman plans to weaponize Amrita, Mitsunari did not lose sight of his ideal, a beautiful world in which all lived in accordance with their responsibilities. He was raised by Hiyoshi from a young age, and unusually loyal as a result. He was said to have originally been an attendant at a temple in Omi province who was discovered by Hideyoshi and made into a samurai. One of the stories about that time is the three cups of tea, in which the young Mitsunari serves Hideyoshi three cups of tea in succession, each just the right size and temperature for the moment. Hideyoshi trusted Mitsunari and assigned him to important positions in the administration of Sakai. The nation, the national uh, land survey, and other areas. Mitsunari returned his trust with full support for the Toyotomi administration. On the first day of the tenth month, Mitsunari was executed at the Rokujo Kawara in the capital. His loyalty to the Toyotomi clan never wavered, and he remained the model of samurai honor right up until his decapitation. Even Ieyasu praised Mitsunari as one who. Uh, of one who knew what true greatness meant in a general. So even in his death, he, he kept his honor all the way through and well, that's something to do, man. That's, that's a good thing to do. Even though he may have been wrong in some eyes, he may have been right in some eyes, he just, he stood, he stood by what he thought was right all the way to the end and he died with it. Now this is someone that's really interesting now, if they ever do, like, a spirit... You know how they have Spirit of Sanada? If they ever do a game for the Oda clan, I'm definitely expecting to see Yasuke there. And I'm going to tell you... I'm going to show you why right here. So, Yasuke was a warrior under Oda Nobunaga. And this is true. I read this uh, online. I uh, checked with some people that are in the history, and they can confirm Yasuke was a real person that was under Oda Nobunaga. He was a black, African-born man of imposing build, he first came to Nobunaga's attention as a servant of a Christian missionary, leaving that position and entering Nobunaga's service at the latter's request. He was treated as a... So he came here as a slave, essentially, and he was treated as a samurai rather than a servant, and is said to have sworn fealty to Nobunaga, a Nobunaga for life. If you think about it like this, you've been a slave your whole life, or as long as you've been walking around in whatever country you're in that's not in your home country. And then here comes someone that you join them and you think you're going to be their slave as well. And they offer you, you're not going to be a slave, you're going to be a samurai. Boom. Do you know how much you've just come up in life? Like you just, you know how that would feel for a person? You've been treating like tr treated like trash your whole life. And someone tells you, you know what, you're not trash. You're a warrior. You're going to join me. They... That res the level of respect Nobunaga threw at this guy, and he throws what he throws back is, I'm going to follow you to the end. You're the first person to give me respect. I'm with you all the way. I think 
Samurai Warriors, Koei should definitely pick up on this. This would be really interesting to see. We can have our first black character. And uh, Samurai Warriors, it's not even made up. It's, it's a real guy. Okay, it's, it could work. And especially if they do their own uh, Nobunaga game. Uh, and, you know, how they did Spirit of Sanada. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, Nobunaga had never seen a black person before. And it was only after seeing Yasuke undress and bathe that Nobunaga finally believed that his skin was genuine. He, if he, he thought it was like, what is your skin? Or did you color yourself? Or Then he was like, hold on, you're, you're naked, you're bathing, you're cleaning yourself, you're still the same color. Wow, this is real. So Yasuke was favored not only with status, but also with weaponry and equipment, and participated in the pacification of Kai province and other operations. He was by Nobunaga's side at his final stand in Honoji Temple, and on his own initiative, bore away his lord's remains after Nobunaga's death. Later, he would be persuaded by the newly arrived Kelly to assist the resurrection of the Overlord. So in this game, Kelly's like, we're gonna bring back Nobunaga, and this guy's, this guy's like, hell yeah. Let's bring him back. I'm gonna kill whoever I gotta kill. Bring back my lord, because I love this guy. He's the only person that's given me the, the respect I deserved in the world, and I, I would love to have him back. That's, Kelly pretty much... Won him over easily in this game, I, I would suspect. So, Yasuke is said to have delighted Nobunaga, who never cared much about tradition or popular opinion. In fact, Nobunaga reportedly planned to grant Yasuke a castle of his own, a full head taller. He's a full head taller than the Japanese men around him, so about a foot. I'd say about a foot, a full head taller, right? Yasuke was also said to be ten times as strong at the fateful battle at Honoje, Yasuke's incredible strength helped drive back Akechi's forces, but he was unable to prevent his lord Seppuku, uh, Seppuku, which is suicide, when they, you know, they put the little, they put the dagger into their stomach. I believe that's uh, how it is. You guys, let me know in the comments section. Um, after breaking through the guards around Honoje, Yasuke concealed Nobunaga's remains and set out for Nijo Castle to join forces of Nobu. Uh, Nobutara, Nobunaga's son and heir. So he just knew what to do next. He's like, Nobunaga's dead. I know Nobutara's next in line. I'm going to stay with the Oda. Um, it is unclear what exactly Yasuke did at Nijo Castle, but before long, Nobutara too had taken his own life. And Yasuke must have been bitterly disappointed with how events had turned out. And they kind of don't talk about it anymore. And it sucks because this is like a little cliffhanger for me. I want to know more about this guy. It's real interesting. Uh, just like his lifestyle and stuff. Uh, next up, Nobunaga. So, he was a daimyo, uh, daimyo during the Warring States period who dominated central Japan, including the capital Kyoto. He rose to the official position of Minister of the Right in the court hierarchy and was sometimes known as Ufu. A version of that title, but was more commonly called the Overlord. His rule began with the. Oh, actually, you know what I didn't do? We didn't take a look at uh, Yasuke, I th or did we? He's a cool character, man. You can also transform into him if you'd like. And we'll look at uh, Nobunaga, which uh, he had to have looked like this in history. I'm. I think so because he's portrayed like this in every game he's portrayed in neo samurai uh samurai warriors sengoku basra has a similar face for him as well and hairstyle he, he had to have looked like this in in real life if he didn't then what the heck you guys are all tricking me but uh yeah anyway um let me see his rule began with the conquest of orari uh, owari province present day Aichi Prefecture, a miraculous victory at the Battle of Okehazama, expanded his influence dramatically, letting him take Kyoto and Sakai. Conquest of the entire nation seemed within his grasp, but he was betrayed by his own vassals and met his end at Honoji Temple. His revolutionary tactics included the use of firearms, and his flexible, rational approach changed the course of history by paving the way for the rise of Toyotomi. Uh, Hideyoshi Toyotomi and other successors. Nobunaga was insatiably curious, particularly about what lay beyond Japan's borders. He took great pleasure in the world globes and clocks presented to him by Christian missionaries and showed favor to the foreigner Yasuke. 
He, they even mention Yasuke again here. Once his conquest of Japan seemed certain, he gleefully looked forward to venturing even further afield to see what else the world held. To help him cross the seas and satisfy his curiosity, he decided to make use of the spirit stones, in other words, Amrita. This would prove the trigger for his betrayal by Akechi Mitsuhide, who prioritized a harmonious social order over innovation and discovery. Nobunaga was a cultured man who loved the tea ceremony, poetry, the game of go, and dance. His views on life and death are said to be summed up by these lines in the Kawakamai song and dance piece, Atsumori. So if you guys want to look that up, his views of life and death are summed up in that piece, which he frequently performed himself a man's 50 years, compared even to the lowliest celestial realm, are but a dream. Having been born, what shall not pass away? Although offered a second life by Kelly, Nobujaka, uh, Nobujaka, no, Nobunaga rejected uh, this was as a distasteful and passed on to the next world instead. If you play the game, I mean the game has been out for a couple months now. If you play the game, uh, he offers Nobunaga a second chance at life, and Nobunaga's like, "This is should things should invincible things exist, etc., etc." And he accepted his fate. He's like, "I died. Let me die." You know, it's the the monkey takes over for me, Hideyoshi. Uh, next, he doesn't matter. Edward Kelly, he's not that big a deal. I mean, he was there, but all right, Matsunaga Hisahide. This is how he looks in this game. And the, the things with spiders, look at, look at his back. Spiders are real, baby. He even has a stage for himself where you get the teapot or something like that. And it has to do with spiders. So apparently him and his teacup were real, his teapot. And his love for spiders, something about that. I don't know if it, he was in love with spiders or he was always portrayed with spiders. But that was, that was there too. He was a general base in Yamato province, present day, not a prefecture. He was commonly known as Danjo and took control of much of Century Japan through sheer brutality, from killing the head of the Miyoshi clan he supposedly served to driving the Ashikaga shogunate from Kyoto. When Oda Nobunaga took Kyoto, Hisahide entered his service, but instead of helping Nobunaga Hisahide, instead of helping Nobunaga, Hisahide used his newfound influence to purge his enemies during the westward advance. Despite repeated betrayals, which supposedly was true, okay, he always managed to talk his way out of punishment until finally Nobunaga attacked his base of operations and finished him. So apparently, Samurai Warriors made it seem like, I'm trying to kill you, Nobunaga, and Nobunaga just says, I forgive you. I forgive you. I think, you know, just to make it more funny for the game. But according to Neo lore, he talked himself every single time out of being killed. And Nobunaga is just like, wow, this guy's trying so hard. Maybe I'll let him slide. Maybe it was similar to how Samurai Warriors did it. I don't know. But then Nobunaga got tired of it. Uh, and he attacked his base of operations and finished him. Hisahide was an evil schemer who did not hesitate to turn on those who trusted him, but also a devotee of the tea ceremony who built a collection of expensive and valuable utensils he had discovered. Nobunaga was repeatedly betrayed by Hisahide, but they shared an interest in the tea ceremony. And knowing Nobunaga, he loved tea. So, and Nobunaga is said to have had a respect for Hisahide's skill at building castles. Even after Hisahide's third betrayal, Nobunaga offered to spare his life in exchange for his legendary Hiragumo kettle. However, Hisahide refused the offer and is said to have used gunpowder to blow up the Hiragumo along with himself, which is what Samurai Warriors actually showed. He blew himself up with a teapot, which is insane. I, and this is this must all be true because Neo is sharing the same thing. But you guys, let me know: is it is it exaggeration? Is it you know? Uh, anyway, next on Hisahide's parentage remains unclear. But his genius became first apparent in the service of Miyoshi Nagayoshi. As the Miyoshi clan's power grew, so, to, so did Hisahide's influence within it. Finally, as the Miyoshi clan began to totter, Hisahide seized control of it from below. 
but he saved his rebellion for after the death of Nagayoshi, who had always had affection for Hisahide. To eliminate the three Miyoshi generals who held the most power in the clan, Hisahide set fire to, to, to a Todaiji temple where their forces had taken refuge and burned down the Hall of the Great Buddha. However, the Shosoin and its countless treasures escaped destruction. As a devotee of the tea ceremony, Hisahide was also reluctant to see the neighboring tea room, the Jugo Zashiki, destroyed in battle. He was like, oh. And it's said to have slipped in before his forces advanced to rescue the valuable items it contained. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Uh, we're going to skip this. We can put it there if you want to read them. I'll put them in here quickly. They're just characters in the game. Amaru. Marume Nagayoshi. If you guys want to see this, you can. Yagyu Sekishusai. Uh, Shisenin Kosen. These are like the masters in the game. Like he's a master of the spear, uh, the the sickle. What, what is it called right now? The chain. I forget the name right now. Uh, single sword. I think single sword or double sword. I'm not sure. Kozuin Ine. Sakata Kintoki. Here as well, Ashikaga Yoshiteru. What I find interesting about this guy, uh, not for Samurai Warriors, is he in that game? I'm not sure if I've seen his name before, but he appeared in uh, Tokiden, which is cool. He's a Mitama in Tokiden, and he looks similar to this. And I think it's cool that they put emphasis on this character. Most likely, other characters as well that I just haven't missed or men that have missed or mentioned. And I think it's cool that they're here as well. But uh, I'll leave that there. You guys can check it out. Because it has to do with the Miyoshi clan, and they may mention something there about uh, Hisahide. I'm not sure. I'm not going to go over that right now. Uh, Date Masamune. I'm not going to cover him right now because I actually don't have all his stuff, and this is from the DLC. I actually have to play more of the DLC to to get more out of it. But we can change his appearance, can we? I can't change his... Oh, does appearance is just his eye patch. Boom, there you go. So we'll leave the patch on. And this game also introduces Date Shigezane. Uh, maybe in the future I'll come back and we'll do these. I do have to do more battles to to get it all. But this is supposed to be, I think, uh, Masamune's uncle or something. I don't know. He was a cousin, longtime friend of Masamune. Oh, interesting. All right. So he was a cousin. That's what it was. And he's got like this cool centipede helm, and he he transforms into something. Yeah. Sound pretty crazy. He's an interesting battle. He'll catch you by surprise if you're not ready. Uh, what else is here? Shigenaga. He's new from the DLC. She's new from the DLC. We'll get to this another time. Here's William. Not gonna cover it, but if you guys wanna to uh, pause it and read up, you may. Now, what I want to show you guys is the Oni Yokai illustrations. Uh, let me see. So these are new guys. Where do I want to start? Uh, let's start with the ogres. Boom. So we're going to show you where this boss actually really came from. So uh, let me see the first. All right, the first and second paragraph is what we need. It's a yokai taking the form of a woman, a woman who had died filled with grudge and hate. Her ferocious expression and unkempt locks speak to her tormented sadness. If you look closely, you can see that her kimono is quite high quality. The mark of a noble woman in life. And then the second paragraph will tell you who it is. Its true form is Lady Sukiyama, wife of Ieyasu. Her real name is Sena. She was born to the Imagawa family, married to Ieyasu, and gave birth to his son Nobuyasu. But after the Imagawa family uh, fell, Oda Nobunaga grew suspicious of her and forced Ieyasu to kill both her and their son, Nobuyasu. To prove his loyalty. In her dying moments, Ieyasu went through with it. In her dying moments, Lady Tsukiyama cursed Ieyasu for taking their lives. And when you play, when you actually fight this boss, you're gonna see her crying. And she's saying, Nobuyasu, and she's crying, Nobuyasu, Nobuyasu. And at first, you're wondering, what is she talking about? But after you read this, it's like, wow. Even as a yokai, she she's not gone fully crazy she's still thinking about her child that was betrayed by her husband and the boy's father 
and it just adds more to the story. Uh, who's another boss? Here's Hanzo's father. He was called Hanzo the Oni, and this is how they portrayed Hanzo's father here, Giant Toad. Uh, let me see. Um, this first paragraph is whatever. This particular yokai's original form was Hatori Hanzo's father, the first Hanzo to bear the title. Feared as, as Oni Hanzo for his ability to lead the Iga clan, he forced those who would succeed him to undergo harsh training. It seems this devotion to the future of his clan bound itself to this world and transformed into the form of a giant toad to continue training his successors. So in their lore, he turned himself into something that would, as the first paragraph says, they're long lived. Toads are long lived. So he could continue training his clan. He's Hanzo Hattori's father, apparently, in this game. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. White Tiger. I've actually, Biako. I've seen this in Yu Yu Hakusho. Pretty cool. Uh, Yuki Ona. You'd be surprised who you think this is. This is Nobunaga's wife. She's portrayed as this character. She's Princess No. Let me see. Uh... Nobunaga loved her noble and fierce personality. They were a happy couple, but perished together in the flames of Honoje Temple. Interesting, right? Uh, let's see what else is here. Um, Jorogumo, no. Umibozu, Great Centipede, Nue. Hinoenma. Hinoenma was an interesting thing, but... What happened to her? Uh, she had been born. This yokai was born from the angry soul of an innocent woman senselessly struck down in a heat of battle. An innocent person just killed and she just turns into this. But I, I guess that's it for now, guys. Yeah, actually, that's it. If you guys want to see more about the yokai, uh, you're interested in seeing more of the Masamune Date stuff, let me know. I can get in there and and I eventually do it. I'm not going to promise it's going to be soon, but I I can try something to, to do it in the future. But thanks for watching. Guys, let me know in the comments section if you learned anything or or this stuff could possibly be all embellished, you know, exaggerated. Guys, let me know that as well. I'll catch you all later. See ya.